many of us have heard of the terms vaccinations, which many people tend to just kind of lump into a word called shots, but a lot of us don't necessarily know how vaccinations work. And this is one thing that we really need to understand in the class when we talk about the immune system. So a vaccination is really just a weakened or mild form of a pathogen that gets introduced into the body to produce immunity. So remember a pathogen is any organism that can cause harm. So it's not one organism in particular like a virus or a bacteria, it's sort of a generic term. And then immunity, we're, we've talked about that with our immune system, which is what helps to protect our body and keep it healthy. Remember, we have two different types of immunity. We're gonna discuss the variations between them. There are things called acquired immunity and we also have active immunity. We'll go through a little bit of detail here. So active immunity, the body is going to make antibodies against a pathogen. Now remember, antibodies are specific types of proteins that are kind of a Y-shaped protein that help to mark the cells for de destruction. So an antibody is specific for that particular pathogen that it's trying to kill off based on a specific shape, kind of like we had when we talked about enzymes and enzymes being specific for their substrate. So these antibodies will be floating around through your bloodstream and if they recognize a particular pathogen based on its shape, they will bind to it or attach to it to mark it for other cells of the immune system to destroy it and kill it off. So in essence, if you come in contact with a real pathogen, the body will have memory cells to make antibodies again. So the idea is that memory cells are floating around in order to help you to not get sick when that pathogen gets introduced into the body. So if you have no vaccine, when you come in contact with a real pathogen, your body is going to have to make antibodies from scratch. So unfortunately, you'll get sick the first time you come in contact with that pathogen, but then your body will have made antibodies against it the next time that it gets introduced, and then hopefully you won't be get, we won't be getting sick the next time. So when you get a vaccination, one of the things to think about is that it can trigger what's called an inflammatory response. An inflammatory response sometimes will cause swelling and pain and redness and heat, and that may make you feel a little bit sick afterwards. And that's partially because your body is trying to kill off this pathogen that was introduced into your body in order to help you get that immunity. So let's look at a couple of examples here. There's a couple of ways we can make our vaccines. So if this were a picture of a pathogen, remember that we have proteins on the surface of the cell membrane that help to mark cells as part of what we call self, known to you, or non-self, which would be foreign. And when they make a vaccine, one way to make a vaccine is to create a similar piece of antigen on a, an organism so that there's a part of that protein on the surface that your body could recognize but yet this organism wouldn't cause harm to you. So it kind of tricks your body into thinking that the pathogen is there. Or we could have a killed or weakened version of the pathogen so that it's really not active enough to make you sick, but the presence of it in your body stimulates your body to act. So what happens is, is the body will recognize that protein or antigen on the surface of the cell. It will make antibodies. Those antibodies then will be able to ready will be ready to fight future infections and help us to make memory cells so that if it comes in contact with it again in the future, our body will be able to recognize it. This is called active immunity. This is how our active immunity is gonna work. Your body actually created its own antibodies to fight off a pathogen, even though that pathogen may have been weakened or dead. So this is active immunity. So examples of some vaccines that use this particular type of immunity are the MMR vaccines, the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine, and also the chickenpox vaccination. Passive immunity is a little different. We've talked about the difference between active and passive transport when we talked about diffusion, and you can kind of think of that same term again for passive immunity. When we talked about passive transport, it didn't use energy. In terms of passive immunity, your body didn't actually really do anything to get the immunity either because what happens is, is you get the antibodies from another individual. So you may get an injection or pills that contain the antibodies that another organism made. So your body actually didn't go through the work of making the antibodies. So it doesn't really know how to make them over again. So when you get an antibody injection, you would get antibodies from other animals that get introduced into your body. And this could be an example of one way that some tetanus vaccines have been made. 
they actually, at some point, they've used antibodies from horses that horses made, and also some rabies vaccinations. You also get passive immunity from your mother. The antibodies are small enough to cross through the placenta, across through the fetus, and also breast milk can contain antibodies. So a pregnant mother or a nursing mother can pass on their antibodies that their body has made to the fetus or to a newborn baby in order to give them a little bit of immunity until their own body steps in or until they get their own vaccinations. This is a natural form of passive immunity. And then when we get our antibody injections, that would be an artificial form of passive immunity. Remember, the body is not making its own antibodies, so that way it doesn't know how to make those memory cells either. So in the case of passive immunity, it's typically very temporary, short-lived, and you could possibly get the disease in the future if you don't get another sort of form of or another injection of the antibodies or if the mother still isn't sort of present to give you those antibodies. So this one is is nice for short-term things, but you would have to get the injections in the future because your body doesn't know how to make those antibodies on its own since it came from another organism. Another thing to think about when we think about immunity are organ transplants. One of the reasons why we talk about organ transplants is because you're introducing something foreign into the body when you get a foreign when you get an organ transplant. Maybe you're trying to replace a missing organ or an organ that's damaged or destroyed or failing due to some types of disease. The problem with organ transplants is remember on the surface of our cell membranes we have these antigens that are foreign if they've come from another person on the surface of the cells that get that are on the donated organ. So unfortunately your body sees those antigens on the surface and they could recognize them as being foreign and think that it's going to be something harmful and attack you. So your body will want to kill it off. So unfortunately what can happen is, is you can have tissue or organ rejection because the body will attack that organ based on the fact that it sees these antigens or proteins on the surface thinking that it's harmful. So unfortunately that organ can be destroyed. So there's a couple of things we do in order to maybe hopefully stop this from happening. We try to do donor recipient matching and what they do is they try to match as many of the proteins as they can. So they'll match blood type, they'll match, they'll do something called HLA testing, trying to match as many of the proteins on the surface. So one of the ways that they can do that is they try to find a close relative. If you have a twin that would be the best relative to have, but a close relative they try to match the size of the organ and things like that. Another thing that they do is they give you something called immunosuppressive drugs. And it's exactly what it sounds like. We're actually decreasing the activity of your immune system so that your immune system really just doesn't respond and doesn't see that antigen on the surface of those cells so it doesn't attack it. Now there are issues with that because your body also isn't as good at fighting other diseases as well. So you have to be pretty careful about exposing yourself to people that are sick and other uh, diseases. A um, couple of examples of organs that we can get transplanted, heart, lung, and cornea for your eye, and then they also can do partial transplants of a liver, or you could do a living transplant of somebody with their liver, you can also take one of someone's kidneys. You could do a lung transplant as well um, on a living person, but typically somebody isn't necessarily going to give up a healthy lung if they're alive.